Hope everybody is uh, having a good day today. My name is Carver Moore. I'm one of the ministers at the Chestnut Mountain Church of Christ in Chestnut Mountain, Tennessee. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, whenever you're watching this, whether you're watching it on Sunday when it first came out or whether you're watching it uh, this coming week or next month or whatever, but um, we're glad you're watching. We're glad that uh, we've got a good audience. We've got a lot of people that have been watching and giving uh, feedback with our videos, and we're thankful for that. And uh, we're going to continue these. Uh, uh, we, uh, you know, recording our sermons uh, during the week and uh, posting them on Sunday. And then we're also going to continue our midweek Bible studies, or what we're calling meditations from the mound. So we're going to continue to do that. And uh, we hope that you'll uh, find these uplifting, and we hope that you will share these videos with other people that might that might need to hear them or might want to hear them. And uh, you know, we're just uh, we're we're thankful for your viewership, and we hope that once this pandemic passes, that you'll come and be with us at the Chestnut Mountain Church of Christ. And at the end of this uh, uh, sermon, um, I'm going to give some information on the church, where we're located, the times we meet, and how to get in contact with us. And then I'm also going to uh, talk about our house to house, heart to heart program. Uh, uh, you know, be on the lookout for those. So uh, we'll hold off on those for the. Uh, end of the video, but uh, in the time we have um, today, I'm recording this on a Thursday, but in the time we have uh, for this video, I want to talk about unity in Christ. What is unity in Christ? How do we apply it to our um, individual lives? Have you, ever, have you ever wondered why there are so many different religious groups in the world? Paul clearly tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 10 that there shall be no divisions among you. In Matthew chapter number 16 and verse number 18, Jesus tells Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church. He doesn't say upon this rock I will build my churches. No, he, he, he only establishes the one church. So why all the divisions? Why not the universal unity in the religious world today? In Revelation chapter number 22 we're told not to add to or take away from the inspired Word of God. And if we do, friends, we will have no hope of heaven. So allow me to ask you this. When we have divisions in the church, aren't we adding to or taking away from the Bible? So um, consider this case study. Consider this man, we're going to call him John Doe. He's been a member of the church for a long time, but one day while studying the Bible, he decides that there is no need for baptism in order to get to heaven in order for our salvation. He feels like he has a good basis for his new discovery, so he begins telling everyone that he comes in contact with about this new theory that he's come up with. And pretty soon, John begun, begins to gain followers. Eventually, he leaves the church and goes out on his own and establishes another church which conforms to, it, to his and now his followers' beliefs. John Doe, what's he done? Well, he's taken the Bible and he's completely twisted it into something that fits his agenda. Completely, And he's taken the Bible and he's taken it completely out of context. This, friends, is how the church, has, the church that Jesus has established has become so divided. But Jesus' church has also become a step or become divided over things in life besides doctrinal matters. It's become divided over things such as tragedy, such as a preacher leaving or being hired, um, as well as programs for the membership either being began or being discontinued. When we allow these things to become to come between us and God, then we're going to get ourselves in trouble. When the church was established, friends, these divisions weren't intended. It was all determined, it was all intended to be universal, to be one body getting working toward heaven, worshiping, serving, and working toward heaven. So in this sermon, there's four points I want to make. I want you to consider on the unity of Christ, where we can be unified, where we can improve our unity in our lives today. Number one, unity, unity in Christ leads to stronger friendships. Think about how you feel about your best friend or best friends. Do you want to be united with them in pretty much everything that you do? Do you hurt when they hurt? Do you love them in their souls? Consider the story of Ruth and Naomi. You've got Ruth and Naomi, and these two women, uh, Ruth is 
the Naomi's daughter-in-law, and in turn, uh, Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law. And society, especially in the 21st century, tells us that that's a very toxic relationship, that mothers and daughter-in-laws should should basically hate each other. But this wasn't the case for Ruth and Naomi. They were very uh, devoted to each other. And when Ruth's um, husband, which would have been Naomi's son, passes away, Ruth or Naomi tells Ruth and all of her other daughters-in-law to go out and, and, and start their lives over again, get remarried and start their lives over again. All of them leave except for Ruth. Ruth is so devoted to her mother-in-law. She's so close to her. And in Ruth chapter number 1, verses 16 and 17, we see what Ruth tells Naomi. We, we see why she stays behind with her mother-in-law. She had no attachment. I mean, she wasn't related just through marriage. But we see why she stays behind. Look, if you've got your Bibles with you, and I hope you do, uh, turn with me over to Ruth chapter number 1, and I want us to look at verses 16 and 17. That's Ruth chapter number 1, verses 16 and 17. It says, Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God, where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. So Ruth is completely devoted to Naomi. She doesn't, she doesn't want to leave her. And, 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 and she goes to all these extremes, wherever you go, I will go, wherever you die, I will die. That's true unity. So what unifies them? Is it the fact that they just have a lot of stuff in common? Well, maybe so, but the number one thing that unifies these two ladies is their love and devotion to God. They're unified under God. And they completely blow this idea of mothers and daughter-in-laws have to hate each other, this idea that it's just a toxic relationship. They blow this idea right up out of the water. How can we make sure to have unity in Christ and their friendships today? How can we have that same unity, that same relationship, that same friendship that Ruth and Naomi has? Well, in Proverbs 18... Uh, verse number 24, we're told that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so when choosing our friends, we must choose those who will lead us closer to God, not farther away. To sum it up, we must choose friends that are unified with Christ, that believe the same things that we do, and are going to lead us closer to Christ instead of away from Him. Number two, unity, unity in Christ leads to stronger familial relationships. Think about how you feel about your spouse. So, and before I get into this second point, I'm going to give a disclaimer. I'm not married. I've never been married. I'm single as can be. I have no children. So I kind of, when I was preparing this, I kind of felt um, unworthy to uh, be speaking on this. But sometimes as a preacher, there's things that you have to say and things that you have to preach on that makes you uncomfortable and things that you might not be an expert on, but you still have to you know, suck it up and do it because people need to hear it. So that's just my disclaimer. So now we'll get back to this. But think about how you feel about your spouse. The relationship between you and your spouse should be second only to your relationship with God. The Bible is very clear about how we should value our spouses. I want to look at a couple different verses about the husband and wife relationship, this man and woman relationship. Look with me, and I hope you still got your Bibles with you. Look with me at the book of Proverbs, chapter number 18 and verse number 22. That's Proverbs, chapter number 18 and verse 22. Proverbs, chapter number 18 and verse number 22. It says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So now let's look over at uh, the book of Ephesians, and we're going to look at Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 22 and 25. That's Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 22 and verse number 25. It says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. And jumping down in verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So, we're to be unified one with another. When you enter into that marriage uh, bond, 
you're to be, uh, you're to love each other just like Christ loved, loved the church. You're to lay your life on the line for that person. And likewise, you're to be unified in Christ, have the same, be on the same page 100% with that other person. And how do you do that? So if you're a guy or a girl that's single like me, what do you do? How do you find somebody that you're going to be unified with? Well, I'll give you a piece of advice. Never date somebody that you wouldn't marry. So you're thinking, well, preacher, what does that mean? Well, it means, and I lost my spot. Hold on. Meaning, it never date somebody that doesn't have the same values that you do. So marry somebody that believes the same thing, um, you know, that's grown up in the, uh, the church that Jesus established their whole life. You know, because if you don't, that's going to lead to some issues down the line. That's just the plain and simple fact. And so what should be third in our life? And what should be second in our physical life, our, our, our familial life, only to our spouse? Well, it's our relationship with our children. In Psalm chapter number 127 and verse number 3, we're told that children are a heritage from the Lord. Likewise, Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse 1 tells us that children must obey your parents. Parents and children must be unified in Christ, and this starts at a young age. Think about children. Children are more impressionable at a very young, very you know, very young age when they're maybe uh, less than a year old, a year old, two years old, three years old than they are when they're my age. That's the time to start them young because they'll they'll develop and they'll be you know more you know likely to commit to the gospel and the and, and and the church and and unified in that so start your children young in getting them involved in the work of the church and parents should you need to remember four things that parents do you need to remember to observe your child so you know watch what they're into watch what they do watch who they hang out with accept your child so you know accept you know maybe they're different views on things. Maybe they root for a different ball team than you do. Manage your child. Make sure that you make sure that they're not, um, you know, in this age of social media, make sure that they're not interacting with people or pages that they shouldn't be interacting with. And then show your child. Show your child based on your teaching, based on your example, based on the way that if you're a man like me, based on the way that you, uh, if you're married, based on the way you treat your wife, or li and likewise based on your wife, based on the way you treat your husband. And also remember, friends, that in your fam familial life, that families that pray together stay together. Like, um, and likewise, families that study the Bible together and attend church together will be stronger and more unified as a result. This goes for not only in the church building, but also in the home. You know, when you go to the church building to worship, act and behave the same way and worship in the same way as you do at home. Share that stuff. And if our families, friends, don't have Christ, then how are they going to be unified? Number three. Unity in Christ leads to healthy churches. So do you remember at the start of the lesson the question that I asked you? I said, why are there so many churches in the world? Why is the religious world made up of so many different religious groups? You know, it, it seems like when you go out in town or, or anywhere, you see all these different religious groups and all these subdivisions and even like... In the brotherhood today, you've got just because a church wears the name Church of Christ doesn't necessarily mean that they believe like, Ch like, like we do at Chestnut Mount. Go back to our text from 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse 10, what Paul says. He says, there shall be no divisions among you. Right there, friends, that in, that in and of itself means that we are to be following the Bible as, it, as it's laid out. Be, and, and be working in and toward the church that Jesus established. And before that, Paul says, you should speak the same thing. So, you know, why, why do we go into it with our opinion? Why do we go into religion and into the church with our mind made up? You know, we're all to speak the same thing. You know, we read the Bible, and that's 100% the way it's, it, it's got to be. 
How do, and so, friends, how do we avoid disagreements with the brotherhood? Well, believe it or not, all these religious groups that we see were created by men. They all started under the church that Jesus established, but then they all broke off over time. But what's the one church that wasn't created by man? That's the one that us that we're lucky enough to belong to. And as we go throughout, as we lead our churches and we're and when we're involved in our churches, it's going to help us be more unified if we just take the Bible, read it, study it, meditate on it, and use it 100% in our lives. Don't try to change it. Don't try to spin it around, take it out of context to fit our agenda. Because then we're going to get get, in, get ourselves in trouble. And Revelation chapter number 22, again, tells us that that's wrong. When we start adding to and taking away from the Bible, we're going to get in our, ourselves into trouble. And, and we're also going to get the church into trouble. And we're not only going to lose our souls, but we risk, we risk losing the souls of other people. And friends, we can't also... You know, there's the doctrinal matters that we can get divided over, but there's also things like, like I mentioned earlier, hiring a preacher, a preacher leaving, or uh, the discontinuation or the introduction of a new uh, program for a, um, a a group of people, a group there at the church. We get divided on those things, and and it causes us just to take our ball and go home. What about in our Bible study? Let's focus on Bible study, man. How we can be unified and make sure that we're always on the same page when it comes to studying our Bible. Well, it, when studying your Bible, if you don't know what you're reading, simply ask for help. Don't assume and don't add your opinion. How easy for it, it, it you know, if I'm reading, my, my Bible's still open to, uh, to the book of Ruth right now. If I'm reading along in the book of Ruth and I come across something that I don't study or I don't, I don't know the answer to, I will go, I admit, I will go and open a commentary and, and, and see what they have to say. I'd sometimes get on that dreaded evil Wikipedia, but oftentimes, and the majority of the time, if I don't know the answer to something, I've just sat and, and read and read and read and studied and researched for hours and days, I'll finally just call up Clarence Deloach or text him or somebody else and just ask for their help. That's easy to do. We need to make sure that we do that. Don't rely on our own opinions or the opinions of outside sources. Go to somebody that you trust. Consider the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter number 8. We have this man, he's from Ethiopia, and he's considered a very religious man. He's considered a very high-ranking official there in Ethiopia. and he was, he was reading along in the book of Isaiah, and he was struggling to comprehend what he was reading. And luckily for him, though, he, he met Philip. Philip just happened to be on the road as well. And Philip, he called Philip over and uh, Philip came and got up in the, um, the chariot or the wagon with him and studied. And um, the story ends with the eunuch being baptized. So don't be afraid to ask for help. This eunuch wouldn't. This eunuch wasn't. And you, would have thought, and you would have thought, you know, as, as high-ranking as he was in his homeland, you would have thought, well, that would have hurt his pride or something. But he, he was not afraid to ask for help. And if you don't ask for help, if you use your own opinion, it's going to lead to nothing but trouble. Remember John Doe? He didn't, he didn't think he needed help. He just went off and uh, flew by the seat of his pants and was totally off in left field somewhere. Also, friends in our churches to be for, for our churches to be unified when making any kind of congregational decision, the leaders and members should be on the same page. So what kind of decision am I talking about? Well, I mean anything from the um, the order of worship to the um, what I'm preaching on Sunday. I mean I want input. And, 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 and the leaders owe the members, you know, they, they owe them to be transparent. You know, it's like with me, we just finished up at Chestnut Mountain. We just finished up a study of the book of Matthew. And I had planned on starting a study in Acts. And we're still going to start that study um, 
and it's already going by the time y'all are watching this, but I, I asked them last uh, last time I was there, I said, um, now if y'all want to do something different, let me know. You know, call me up, text me, let me know. But if I don't hear from you, we're going to do X. So, you know, give them that option. Congregate leaders of congregations and even members. We're accountable to each other. We need to be transparent. We need to make sure that we're all on the same page. Also, you see a lot of congregations come, become divided because of tragedy. So when tragic things happen in our congregations, unity in Christ helps us get through these through these times. So whether it's a natural disaster, a member uh, getting suddenly, um, passing away suddenly, getting sick all of a sudden, um, you know, there's some sort of doctrinal issue and a group of people leave. Um, unity in Christ, if we all pull together, we can get through those things. Remember, friends, what I said in my sermon a few weeks back. We talked about worry. And we talked about how worry leads us sometimes to live in the past. When these bad things happen, we've eventually got to let them go. We can't just dwell on these things, or we're never going to move forward. It's going to cause friction. we got to unify. Unify. And friends, how will the church grow and remain healthy if we can't overcome tragic things that happen in our churches or in our lives so number four unity in christ leads to healthier relationships with god so when we're one with god prayer will become easier when we're when we are one with god church attendance will become easier when we are one with god serving him will be easier and when we are one with god our spiritual lives will be the beneficiary our relationship with God is the greatest and most important relationship that we can have with anything or with anyone or anything. God is available for us 24-7, 365. We can go to Him in prayer and open our Bibles at any time to find comfort. Whether we agree or disagree with what He says or the way He answers our prayers, we must accept it 100%. If not, friends, we risk losing our relationship with Him and thus our unity with Him. Think about all the people that have left the church that have lost that unity. Think about all the church that have, churches that have gone through trouble. Think about all the families that have gone through trouble, all the friends that have gone through trouble. It was over just some simple conflict, some simple unanswered prayer. It caused them to lose their faith in God. They turned away from Him. And sadly, they may have lost their soul. So, to sum things up and put a pretty little bow on what I've said this morning, or said whenever you're watching this, unity in Christ simply makes us better all around Christian individuals. It makes us better Christian friends, makes us better Christian husbands and wives, makes us better Christian parents, makes us better Christian uh, church members and leaders. Unity. Unity in Christ also helps us to encourage and uplift others. And it makes the journey to heaven much easier. Paul commanded the church at Philippi in uh, Philippians chapter number 2 and verse 2. He, commanded, he commands us and also the, our churches today. He said in Philippians chapter number 2 and verse 2 to be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and what? One mind. Unity in Christ is of the utmost importance. How are we going to carry out our tasks here on this earth and continuing to work toward heaven? If we don't have unity, aren't we all trying to get to the same place? Aren't we all trying to get to the same place? Unity. Unity will either help us or hurt us. So, friends, maybe there's somebody out there that you're struggling with your Christian unity. Reach out to us. Reach out to the local Church of Christ in your area. We or they would love to sit down with you, pray with you help you be a better person, most importantly, be a better Christian, help you on the road to heaven. Maybe there's somebody here that you were once a, um, or, or, or you've never known anything about the religious world. 
you never you've seen all these different uh, religious groups, and it overwhelms you. Reach out to us. We would love to study with you. We would love to take you in uh, to to the church, the one true church that Jesus established in Matthew chapter number sixteen. I said at the beginning that I would give you some information on how to reach out to us. We have a Facebook page. If you want to just uh, comment on something, comment on one of our videos, send us a private message through that Facebook group. You can write to us at 545 P. Ridge Road, Chestnut Mountain, Tennessee. And if you want to join us for worship, that's where our building is located. We would love for you to join us. We meet Sunday morning for Bible study at 10 a.m., uh, worship at 11 a.m. and Sunday evening uh, for worship at 5 p.m. So we would love to see you. We hope that these lessons are uplifting to you. We hope that we are uh, reaching uh, not just our community, but uh, to all the stretches of the world. I also want to tell you about the House to House Heart to Heart program before we close. Back in March, we uh, we decided we made a unified decision at the Chestnut Mound Church of Christ. We wanted to reach out into our community, reach out into the Chestnut Mound, the Granville, and the Buffalo Valley communities with these house-to-house, heart-to-heart um, pamphlets. The first uh, issue came out in March. Uh, the second issue uh, should have mailed out in July. Um, we've also got some um, some 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 issues from March, and we've also got uh, some extras of um, these from July that um, you feel free to drop by our building, and we can get you uh, how many ever copies you need. Feel free to write to us. Feel free to contact us through our Facebook page, through our YouTube channel, and we can make sure you get a, one or more of these in your hands. But be looking for these in the mail. Um, it's just a good work that uh, we have chosen. We have made a unified decision to get involved with. So, friends, remember unity in Christ. Remember that there is no need for uh, fighting, for arguing, as long as you have Christ, as long as you have unity in Him and your friendships, your families, and your church, your churches and your Christian lives, there's nothing that we can't accomplish. We will get to heaven. Friends, we love you. The Chestnut Mount Church of Christ loves you. But most importantly, God loves you. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, if we can do anything for you, please reach out to us. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a blessed day.